gout, arthritis, and joint pain. The most common joint affected by gout is the first metatarsophalangeal joint. The most common joint affected by pseudogout is the knee joint. Gout and pseudogout both show a sudden onset of pain, redness, and swelling, typically affecting a single joint in 80% of the cases. Gout and pseudogout are similar problems with different causes. Gout. Gout is caused by the buildup of uric acid and the deposit of uric acid crystals inside the joint. The best test to diagnose gout is with a joint fluid analysis. Gout crystals are needle-shaped and negatively bifringent. When placed under polarized light, they will be yellow. 90% of patients suffering from gout are men between the ages of 40 to 60 years old. Uric acid buildup in the body occurs by two main mechanisms. One is excessive urate production. The second one, diminished urate clearance. Uric acid is produced from the breakdown of proteins inside the body and from the proteins of the food that is eaten. Gout symptoms and signs include joint pain, swelling, and arthritis. You can see here the periarticular erosions. Patients with gout have periarticular erosions along with the formation of uric acid soft tissue masses in and around the joint, which can be seen on x-rays. You can see it the tophi in addition to the periarticular erosions. Soft tissue tophus deposition with periarticular erosion punch out lesions. The tophi occurs due to deposition of uric acid crystals. The tophus aspirate may look like toothpaste. What are the precipitating factors? The sudden attack of gout can be brought on by anything that increases the level of uric acid in the blood, such as dehydration, increased consumption of alcohol, eating large amount of meat or seafood, trauma or surgery. The other risk factors for gout are obesity, hypertension, and diuretics. Red meats, seafood, liquor, beer increase the risk of gout. Vegetables, wine, total protein did not increase the risk of gout. Diagnostic testing, aspiration and the analysis of the joint fluid is the best method for diagnosis. Elevated uric acid is not diagnostic. 80% of people with elevated uric acid will not get a gouty attack. There are blood tests such as white blood cell count, C-reactive protein, sedimentation rate, and uric acid level that are helpful in supporting the diagnosis if elevated. But if these levels are normal, it cannot definitely rule out gout or pseudogout. Every time you aspirate a joint and you get synovial fluid, you need to analyze that for cell count, differential, find out if you have crystals or not, and send the fluid for culture and sensitivity if you suspect infection. Differential diagnosis. It might be difficult to differentiate acute gouty attack from acute septic arthritis. Patients with an acute gouty arthritis may not have elevated serum uric acid level. Septic arthritis. Patient with acute gouty arthritis may present with symptoms and a clinical picture that is similar to septic arthritis. So you will aspirate the joint fluid and the fluid will look like pus, but it could be gout. Then you will take the fluid and examine it under the microscope 
you will find crystals, needle shaped, intracellular crystals. So you will think it is gout. The cell count of the aspirate may be high, maybe 50, 60,000, and the neutrophils may be high also, maybe 80%. The incidence of gout and associated septic arthritis of a joint is low. It's about 1.5%. This incidence of septic arthritis will increase to 11% or more if the cell count is more than 50,000. So is it gout alone or is it gout and infection together? How do you sort this out? So we aspirate the joint. The aspirate will look cloudy. It looks like pus. So we look for crystals. If there is crystals, then it is gout. But the presence of uric acid crystals does not exclude septic arthritis. So we look at the cell count will be high, 50,000 or more. We look at the neutrophil count. Maybe it's 80% or more then we think there is an infection in addition to gout or maybe gout alone. So we need to culture the fluid. After we aspirate and send the fluid for culture, then we give the patient empiric intravenous antibiotics pending the culture result. Remember, gout and septic arthritis can occur together, but the incidence is low. The incidence will increase significantly if the cell count is more than 50,000. Now, let's talk about pseudogout. Pseudogout or chondrocalcinosis is the deposition of calcium pyrophosphate dehydrate crystals in the hyaline cartilage or fibrocartilage, calcium pyrophosphate dehydrate disease, CPPD. Pseudogout is a metabolic disease where calcium pyrophosphate dehydrate crystals are formed within the joint space. Most often affects the knee, occurs more in older patients, calcification of fibrocartilage, chondrocalcinosis. Pseudogout crystals are rhomboid shaped, positively bifringent. The crystals will be blue when placed under polarized light. Associated conditions, hyperparathyroidism, rheumatoid arthritis, and gout. Another scenario, is it pseudogout or is it infection? So you need to aspirate and decide, is it pseudogout or is it infection? Because you don't want to inject the knee with steroids when there is an infection. You need to look for the rhomboid crystals of pseudogout. Here is an x-ray in pseudogout. It will show thin calcification in the articular cartilage or menisci. Calcification of the synovium, tendons, and ligaments can also occur. Treatment of gout and pseudogout. The treatment of acute gout is endomethacin or colchicine if the patient cannot tolerate the non steroidal anti inflammatory. Colchicine inhibits the inflammatory mediators and is indicated if the patient cannot tolerate endomethacin. How about chronic gout? Allopurinol to prevent the buildup of uric acid. Allopurinol is an seen oxidase inhibitor. What is the treatment of pseudogout? Non steroidal anti inflammatory medications and intraarticular injections may be helpful. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.